We're recording today on the lands of the Yagara people, and we acknowledge the traditional elders here, past and present. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea. I'm a former registered nurse and midwife and a community advocate. Welcome to Beyond the Rona. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm a digital marketer and small business owner. And we're on a journey here to find out what our community members think are the big problems and big solutions as we emerge from the pandemic. Today, we're talking to Dave Coles. Is that how I say yeah. it? Sorry. No, you got it oh, thank God. I got it right. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So we're talking to Dave and um, he's actually the spokesperson spokesperson for uh, Logan Greens. Uh, welcome, Thanks, Dave. Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here. So we've just done the first week of pre-poll. Um, we're actually in a federal election, unless anybody has uh, not noticed that. There's quite a lot of media going around the country. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to kick this rotten government out and have some change, especially for all of the minority groups, uh, people who have been forced into poverty, I'd have to say, um, you know, people who are really struggling. So hopefully this is going to be the beginning of some serious change um, and um, a little bit of hope, especially um, older women, young people, people who, who have been left out of the budget. Um, Dave, what are some things that you're hoping for? Uh, getting dental into Medicare and mental health into Medicare and, you know, something that can ease the uh, the cost of living which is you know just so such a huge thing uh, for ordinary people especially around the logan area and um, so that's that's something that, yeah. that the greens really um have at the top of their agenda for this this election and hopefully for um any negotiations in a, in a hung parliament yeah i noticed um your family has recently come on board which is pretty amazing Real, yeah yeah it's yeah. good to see i mean these things are important to they're not just important to me they're important to to all of the members of our house so yeah it's it's great to have them helping out for the election definitely yeah and whereabouts have you been this week like which which um, so i've spent some time at springwood and also at browns plains so um you know it's been wet and wild out there and <laughs> it's been challenging uh with the the just the locations of the the booths uh, we haven't always had the greatest access to to the voters as they as they're entering the the, the voting building, um, but uh, we're trying what we as much as possible to to get our message to them. So, what normally happens, like at the at the booths, like where are the people and where are the? So normally we would be um, you know outside the the entryway, more than six meters from the entryway, um, and where it's safe. Um, we would be sort of able to to interact with voters as they approach the the, the venue. Um, depends on on that venue um, where that that line is and how how close we can be um, for matters of safety and and things like that. So uh, at Springwood, and um, what do the what do the voters think of that though? Like is you know, <sighs> is that pretty annoying for them? I mean, sometimes you hear back some feedback that. You know, they don't particularly like I think that. it does vary by person. Look, ultimately, people want to have the option to to get that information. Um, you know, you might know how you want to vote, but you won't necessarily know um, the other candidates that, that are on the ticket and how your party would prefer you to, to place your preferences. Um, you might also want to grab, there might be one or two parties where you're just not sure of because you only see them at election time and you're not entirely certain what they stand for. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, parties that are on the, the Senate tickets that um, really you, you wouldn't have good exposure to their policies because they just don't have the budget to compete with the, you know, United Australia Party out there on, on every uh, TV and billboard around the country at the moment. That Senate paper is kind of ridiculous. You go, you, so I voted early as well, and you get the paper and it goes up one side of the booth and up the other and just trying to like wrangle it and just see an incredibly long list of candidates. And I think when people, especially like first time voters, like um, talking to, to some young people, because I was on the Woodridge um, pre-poll talking to some young um, people who are doing this for the first time and just 
going, is this the system? Like it's a meter long pa- piece of paper. Like this is crazy. <laughs> what kind of system is this? I saw Drew Pavlou, his, um, last night he posted that some guy who didn't like him, he numbered every single square at the bottom and then made sure that he sent a photograph of numbering him last, you know? <laughs> the other funny it. one I've seen is to, to make sure you, that you number the bosses below the line so it makes it hard to count for the AEC. and so tim does everybody um you know the people who are handing out these how to votes right um i I know that things are pretty competitive now because this election you know it it's sort of it's heartfelt this election you know people are really passionate this election like how are the volunteers getting along at the booth like what have you noticed oh for me are there any fights for me i i was i was expecting potentially a bit of competition but actually woodridge has been pretty chilled and i think that that is because there are just not a lot of voters turning up to woodridge um looking at 2019 that there was that's sad yeah that it was the biggest so yeah we should say that um this we're looking specifically here at Rankin. And so in the Rankin division, Woodridge was the biggest pre polling venue. Um, mm. and this year they've, they've moved that venue out of Woodridge into Slacks Creek, but still called it Woodridge. Um, but people just aren't rocking up to uh, anywhere near the numbers in 2019 and they're going instead to, to spring mm. or Brown's Plains. And so yeah, I think it yeah. could be that they've named that one as a not wheelchair accessible, yes. which means, you know, I mean, Woodridge being a lower socioeconomic area, you have higher rates of disabled people, people who use a walker, you know, people who have mobility problems. I mean, granted, yes, they are um, allowing, I'd say allowing access to the lift Mm. now. They didn't at first. Um, Breaking um, news, breaking news. The the lift has malfunctioned and no longer works. Oh, what a shame. You know, but why would you put it? Unbelievable. It's Why would you put crazy. a, you know, a, two flights of stairs to get to a voting booth with a malfunctioning yeah. lift in a place uh, that is one of the poorest suburbs that has a 12% informal yeah. vote rate, right? Why would you put a no, you know, non-accessible booth there where it's a place where, you know, you will have a high disability rate? Like, that just doesn't make sense. It's a crazy location. Uh, it's, it's run by the AEC to find these locations. You know, they had three that, years yes. to find the location. They've found the worst possible you know? location, I have to say. Like, it is terrible. And, yeah, I can't believe that they've chosen that location. But Springwood's not much better, right? You... Uh, there is a, oh, there's a ramp access for Springwood. There's ramp? Is it? Okay. Yeah. There's a ramp, but, look... Again, they've made, they've put it in a place where the car park is, you know, it's not, it's just not the place where um, it's safe for volunteers mm. to be um, and to be able to hand out your how to votes and actually access people mm. properly and safely. So again, yeah, you've got to have the volunteers out on the footpath, um, which makes the voters well. They are a little bit confused because they're coming from the car park and walking up the road like. Um, into up to the um to the footpath again um and they're at risk of being hit by a car there like it's not it's not safe but it's owned by you know the city council brisbane city council so of course aec would choose that one um being you know a liberal owned place well i actually city council yeah brisbane city council yeah they they would choose the ones that suit them i don't know what do you do uh, What's your I think the up- your take on the vibe, Dave? Uh, in terms of uh, people coming to pre poll, yeah. um, pre polls I think are a funny one because people are really there's two kinds of people that want to come to pre poll. I think there's the ones that have got a really good idea of who they're going to vote for, and they they knew that a year ago or longer ago, and they have just been super excited to come and get that vote in there because um and i feel like at this election it's predominantly those people that are really wanting to change the government now and then the other type of person i think is um those 
those ones that are just really disengaged and they see voting as a real imposition that, um, you know, they, they have to turn up to avoid a fine, get in there, get it done, and then don't have to worry about it again. Um, so, I mean, sad as it is, uh, to to say those those people are, the, those people are out there, um, and you do see some of that when you when you're at a um, you know handing out uh, those people that just really don't want to they don't want to engage um, they're not not at all interested. Yeah. Oh, at Browns Plains we had heaps of people who wanted to engage. I had the best time there. It was just oh, cool. fantastic. Like so many passionate people walking past and really getting into it. Had um, a few Indian people um, stopped and they um, wanted to talk about how difficult it was um, during COVID. They, you know, I had a, a man stop and talk to me about how he wanted to bring his parents over to help. His wife had just had a baby um, and she had a cesarean and he wanted his parents to come over and help her. Um, but, you know, you know, when that rule came in that if somebody came over to um, they would have a jail term or something or other um, that, you know, that rule in COVID. Um, so he was talking about how he was going to vote Greens and, um, yeah, it was just, yeah, lots of people stopped and, yeah, or they, or they went past and did the thumbs up, you know, like, I voted for you, you know. Yeah, there was heaps. And then lots of young people went past and, you know, then I talked about um, climate change with them and, um, of course, it was, bloody raining yeah. so it was, it was quite easy to say you know save the planet look at us <laughs> and you'd have a laugh with them and just yeah it was really good it was a bonding experience being at browns plains because so many people were um were struggling you know and i couldn't get over so many people didn't have an umbrella and were just coming in <laughs> to vote i just couldn't get over it like they were coming in to vote and just but like numbers and numbers and numbers of people and they just, they were passionate though. They wanted to change this government and, um, you know, some of them would stop and have a chat and some of them were like, no, nah, I need to do this. i got to do it. Yeah. Whether it's raining on my head or not, I don't care. Rain, hail or shine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I absolutely loved being at Browns Plains. It was it was a really good feeling and so many of them as i said walked past and said yeah i got to vote green this is it i i think as yeah. well for me I, I really enjoyed the saturday i was at the browns plains where i had much more interaction with with the voting public than at springwood just because mm. of, of the way that the site's laid out but um i yeah. think so and, right uh, what made it really great for me is that we've had you know, we've had this really long build up prior to the election of when would the election be called. Um, for those of us that are really engaged in politics and follow this stuff week in, week out, um, we've been looking forward to this time for at least six months now. And um, mm. and then five weeks ago, it really kicked up a gear when, when we formally entered into election mode. Um, but once yeah. you then get into pre-poll and you really start um, talking to, to the public, that those people where the other thing is what you'll never speak to someone and know that voting is at the top of their mind, except for at a polling place. When you speak yeah. to them there, you yeah. know that voting is the only thing that they're thinking about. You can, you can get all the messages out all the rest of the time. You can door knock all you like, but, they might have in the back of their mind something else that they've got to be doing, something else that's happening yeah. later tonight, whatever else it is that distracts potentially from what you're trying to communicate. So um, that's that's one of the great things I think about um, polling day and, and once we really get into the to the meat and potatoes of, of the actual election itself. Yeah. The other thing I think is really interesting about Rankin and, you know, like I was the candidate for Stretton, um, is like the mix of cultures that you meet. And um, I think Tim was talking about, you know, you were greeting people in different languages. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Like I was a little bit nervous because 
I have a hard time picking exactly where people are from because we have a lot of mixtures. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of people whose one parent is from one country, another parent is from another country. You know, we're all kind of like a lot of people are mixed, yeah. um, including me. Um, and you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> But um, so I, I'm nervous to kind of pick exactly where people are from, you know, but um, but I think that's really cool when you can greet them in their language and they, you know, they can they can say hello back. Yeah, like, it's, and um, I, I would struggle to pick it unless I hear them. That's that's probably the other thing is like when this this lady, she's in her 50s or, or 60s, um, turned up and. Yeah, I think she spoke to the LNP uh, um, people first, and it was at that moment that I heard her talking that I was like, right, that's a. I could hear that that's a Filipino yeah. accent, and so I'm like, come on, you know, like a, th- that. You can just, you can just immediately kind of respond to that, and I think that that's great because suddenly it cuts through a little bit more because I think for a lot of people, yeah. it's just a wall of color: blue, red, green, and orange and yellow, yeah. um, and we're yeah. all kind it's of kind of homely, yeah. And then suddenly you can cut through yeah. by, by using their language. Um, uh, the, another interesting thing, like what you've both picked up on, I've kind of experienced as well at Woodridge, which is certainly like an element of um, the people that are voting because they just want to get it out of the way and they don't want to really engage. But I saw something quite, that, that kind of surprised me, which is there were a, a cohort of people that, we're turning up and going and stopping and talking, like talking to, you know, One Nation, talking to Liberals, talking to Labor, talking to me. And yeah. generally, like my only other thing to compare this to is back at, um, you know, the Stretton at the state election. And I felt there everyone knew they were going in and just kind of voting Labor mostly. And, and while yeah. this is a very strong Labor electorate and rank, and I felt like there was a bit more about like their vote was kind of up for grabs, I felt, this time yes. around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. They seem to be really thinking about it this mm. time. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately they are taking – I say unfortunately, but they are taking one off, <laughs> off, off the um, – well, I'll say it, you know, they're taking one off Clive Palmer's group and off One Nation's group when really they don't have anything that's going to help them. Yeah. But I'm hoping that they have a look at it and really think, okay, well, I've had a look at all of them and then really having a think about what policies are there that's going to help me in my life. Because you want them to have, a, you know, have democracy, but really have a look and think, okay, are the words freedom, 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 actually there to help me? Or are there some policies that are going to help me in my life, you know? And really, is a billionaire who never paid his workers, is he actually going to care about you? Like, I can't see that guy ever caring about you. And I can't see this woman, Pauline Hanson, if she doesn't believe in climate change, she's racist against, first it was the, um, I think it was Chinese Mm. first, and then Muslims, Mm. Um, she was racist against Aborigines at one stage and now she likes them. I don't know. She just picks yeah. and chooses which group she likes and which group she doesn't like and who's an Australian and who's not an Australian according to what's going to get her votes. Um, I don't know who's next on her list of who she's not going to like, but um, neither of those groups support the the continuation of the NDIS um, and, and making sure it's properly mm-hmm. funded. Um you know, neither of them support raising the, um, you know, the pensions and making sure, I mean, Clive Palmer says it, but honestly, he's not going to raise the pension if he won't even pay his Mm. workers superannuation. You know, they're not going to look after you. They just, they just want the coal and gas um, subsidies. Like they just want to get paid from coal and gas companies. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, they're not yeah. There Andrew, you mentioned uh, about my family being there and, and sort of campaigning as well uh, for, for the Greens, and um, you know, my, it's my stepdaughter; it's her first federal election, so it's it's all quite mm. new and exciting for her. But she she looked at the the policies on the back of the How to Vote card as as she was handing it out, and she says, "Why why would anyone not want to vote for these things?" And I, and I, I had to laugh because, of course. We, we feel that way, but I'm certain as well that if you went around and, and collected up all the others and had a look at the, you know, those dot point like 
five word slogans like they all sound great right they, they all make great points like cap your home loan at three percent right of course that that sounds awesome but once you get into the nuts and bolts of how that works and uh, you know when when you really look at how that works you you soon realize that actually that won't work it's it's totally unfeasible so um yeah. you know that they, they, they it doesn't it completely conflicts with the policy of bringing down government spending because the, the cost of doing that through through the government would be you know astronomical so the, when you when you look at those things oh, there is no way that he would raise minimum wage there is no way yeah i mean it, it just doesn't sit with the the man in terms of who he is in, in society right so no. it, there's it's hard for the 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 masses to cut through that, I think, unless you really engage um, more so than just on on polling day and reading those how to votes. Um, you know, that's that is the the challenge for all um, political parties to to get that message, to look at the the detail behind that quick soundbite. You know, what what yeah, did she know yeah. already about the Greens policy, or did she learn most of it there there in that moment? Um, yeah. Look, we talk about it at home a lot. So she's heard from us. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, um, mental health care is a big one for us in this house. That that would be a, a massive um, mm-hmm. benefit to us. Um, but but things like you know dental, that's something that, and I talk about as well how the the impact that those policies would have on private health insurance, because it's it's easy for us to think about only what that means for people that rely on Medicare system, but that then has a flow on effect to private health insurance and true and and the costs that the private health insurers are bearing. Um, and then what that means in terms of the costs of private health cover. Yes. Yep. So, um, you know, you would expect that private health insurance may be cheaper um, when the government's picking up more of the bills for dental and mental health. Exactly. Yeah. It's and like so many of the the policies on that on the back there, it's just it 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 doesn't stop at that issue. I think there is uh, such a flow on, you know, um, ramifications and benefits and um, yeah, the flow on effect into all of these other areas into the economy more more broadly. But I think that's that is the thing about it is also the complexity of. Um, how how that can be communicated because it is multifaceted and there's so much benefit in like each of these these um, issues. It does crack me up when I have. Um, uh, I've been at Springwood a lot this week, but so you know, there's a lot of old white people, um, and they'll come past and uh, and I'll say, oh, you know. Do you want dental into Medicare? Do you want to raise the pensions? And it's like they don't even register what I'm saying, um, but they notice that I'm wearing green. And, you know, some some of them will look at me and go, no, absolutely not. I will be putting you last, you know. And, like, I've said the words dental into Medicare and raising the pension and, like, quite logical things, you know, but I just go, oh, okay. Like, it just blows mm. me away. And I think, what's so bad about that? Like, why would you... Why do you think that that's such a bad uh, thing? And, and you feel mm. like if, it blows me away. If you were wearing away. a red shirt, then they would have. If, if that was a, if that yes. was a policy coming from yes. your red shirt, then they would have been like, "What a great policy! Like, wow. wow, yeah, what a like, great obviously, idea!" Obviously, obviously, oh then um, you know it has that weight of legitimacy because it's coming from one of the two major parties, one of the parties that yeah. has a realistic chance of making that into government in the mind yes. of people, right? So, and, and that's the yes. other thing. It's it's only because it says greens that they think, oh, absolutely right. not. You started the bushfires. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Is, How are you going to pay for there that? There is such How? yeah. There is such a strong <laughs> perception, like of, and it's like twenty years old of like what people think the greens are, um, which is very hard to shake unless. Like, I, I feel like, yeah. you know, it can, it can be disrupted, like, at the door. Like, it feels like the inner city campaigns have got it right, like, where they can, you know, talk to voters and, and, and change their mindset. But it's, it's in the old 
uh, or in the, the kind of marketing world that would be really seen as like an image problem. Like the Greens have an image problem around, yes. around that the, they're a protest party, <laughs> tree huggers, like it, that, that's still yes. hanging over the, the head of the party. Yeah. That, that image, yeah. that, it's the unshakable image though, that sticks to the big parties too, because, you know, True. Labor has that, that image of being for the worker when, if you really look into it, I don't know mm. if that stacks up anymore. It's just that yes. that reputation, and and the liberals have that reputation yeah, of being great is. on the economy. Which, if if you ask an economist, oh, they'll tell you that that's that not true. Been. So it's how that perception is that is really really hard to change. Yeah. In fact, I would argue that it just doesn't change. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And the greatest perception yeah. at the moment that I'm trying to break is. Like One Nation and um, and Palmer saying that the NDIS is non-sustainable. Now, this is something that people just aren't getting out there. That the NDIS, mm. if you give disabled people an NDIS package, they are employers, mm. you know, and this just does not get yeah. out there. That we have like the economy, you don't just give money to a disabled person and it just disappears somehow. Mm. Like... They actually have to spend that on hiring people, hiring um, support workers or hiring cleaners or hiring somebody, you mm. know, which means somebody's got a job, mm -hmm. you know. That part is just not out there in common knowledge, yeah. you know. So everybody's saying, oh, no, the NDIS is not sustainable. It's like saying the economy is not sustainable or the, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, you haven't just given this money away and then it just disappears into thin air. Like you give the money to a, a disabled person and especially if you're self-managed, like then they have to, they have to use it up. Like they have to use that funding to hire somebody, which means how many disabled people are hiring support people? You know, we're giving people jobs. We're actually having to spend that money in our economy. So again, mm. like we're stimulating the economy by buying goods and services, paying GST, you know, it's, of course it's sustainable because the money stays in the system and goes round and round and round. Yeah. Like it doesn't just disappear. Yeah. Uh, there's always a return on the investment that, that you're looking for. And there's definitely a return on that investment. Exactly. It's similar with free childcare, you know, that there's studies done that indicate that if you were to do free childcare, yes. then, you know, people can return to the workforce. Yes. You can be more productive and it's something like $2.40 yeah. in return yeah. on investment for every dollar spent. So, Absolutely. You know, sure, it's an expensive yes. policy, but it's an investment in the economy, and it and it you know it, it equalizes yeah. our society in terms of taking away um, yeah. some of those. Uh, I, you don't want to say it's it's a, a weight or a responsibility of women, but it ends up being women that tend to stay home with the children. It is, and so you know those yeah. those that then has knock on impacts in terms of of their. Uh, participation in the workforce and their their salaries later in life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Things that have to change. Hey, um, yeah. Another interesting thing that um, I was talking to you guys before, but um, because we're such a multicultural community, I thought it was really interesting that um, eighty six percent of Chinese Australians use WeChat, not Facebook, um, to get their Chinese. Um, language news and um, it was in the news recently that ScoMo's account had recently been sold and rebranded as New Life for Chinese Australians and he's got 75,000 followers on that account which I thought was pretty significant mm -hmm. but um, to actually get an account you have to be a Chinese citizen so our politicians are actually getting someone who is a Chinese citizen to set up the account for them and then they get to basically, you know, run these social media accounts to, as I said, 86% of Chinese Australians. So this is an area that people, I think, really aren't quite aware that, um, you know, because we have such a multicultural community in Rankin that, um, you know, unless you are able to set up social media accounts or get into, you know, the newspapers or or get your message in language and in the form that is usable by um, our language groups. Keep in mind that when I did the Stretton election, 30% um, 30 30 of people who lived in the Stretton electorate spoke Chinese, mm. spoke Mandarin. 
Um, so, you know, it's huge chunks of our community who only really um, get their messages in their language. I think, um, you know, these are chunks of the community that really have to be reached out, you know, in language. Um, and I'm just wondering what the damage was done with, um, you know, not being so diplomatic and maybe, um, you know, maybe uh, whether or not that was a good or a bad thing that ScoMo's account had been sold from underneath him, um, what that's going to do to the uh, to the votes in the Chinese community here in Australia for him. Um, yeah, I don't know, especially since we have such a big Chinese community here in Rankin and yeah, I don't know. It's something to watch anyway. I think it's an interesting one when you when you but outsource your social media, uh, or, or at least one aspect of your social media outsourcing uh, that type of stuff, you lose the control um, over that. So, you know, it's uh, yeah. a bit ironic. Yeah, they the talked liberals. about Josh. Yeah, they talked about Josh Frydenberg. Not that he's in our electorate, but he said um, they said that he advertised for volunteers on WeChat. Um and what they advertise is that they'll give lunch, tea, water, and transport. Water, isn't that nice? Um, and good. a volunteer, if water is good, yes. And um, and a volunteer certificate huh. to anybody who volunteers for him, which is very generous. Um, okay. But yeah, but I thought, wow. So that's how they get their volunteers is is on these other platforms. But um, yeah, we don't. Um, Little Logan Greens, we don't have access to a, to a WeChat. And we don't have access to lunch either. <laughs> Self-funded. <laughs> we do have access to water. 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 Yeah, we, oh. we have water. <laughs> way, was, way too much of the, it this the, week. the one word of the uh, pre-poll is wet. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. It was yeah, interesting, it was. actually, when I was at Browns Plains and I was listening to some of the Labor volleys were talking amongst themselves, and it was it was pretty clear that you know they they were there because um, they were associated with uh, some group, and by that association they were kind of asked to come down, and and um, you know they didn't know who the candidate was, uh, the, the the Labor candidate. They didn't, certainly didn't know any of the others, but they didn't know right. the Labor candidate, and that you know they, they're given a shirt and given the instruction, here you go, hand this out, huh. just vote one Labour. And um, it's just kind of funny uh, when when we're here trying to staff booths and, and things from a, a Greens perspective and we're entirely reliant on volunteers, we, we talk to people that know the message that they believe in Greens policies um, we're definitely yeah. not going, uh, you know, calling up an organisation or something and saying, "Hey, can you can you get a bunch of your your members down here and and help us out?" So, um, it's I think a bit of a difference, and and it's a huge advantage yes. because, like we were just talking about before, they're having those conversations with the voters at the polling place, right? Yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah. That you know what the policies are, and you know why, why you should vote for, oh, for the yeah. party that you're endorsing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. and for them speaking with passion and conviction, and because they believe in 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 those, yeah, it makes a massive difference. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you're pretty excited for next this uh, coming yeah. week. Yeah, look, the the excitement levels keep ramping up. The closer you get, um, the the more that the the busier the polling places will be in in this next five days yeah. um, and then Saturday, the big one, I think, yeah. you know, there's been a lot of talk about how many people increasingly voting early, but um, there's a shorter pre-poll period this time around. Um, I think we're still going to have, especially the weather might be, I think a bit better uh, next weekend as well. Um, oh, so, okay. you know, I I'm still thinking that we're going to have a really big Saturday and um, for, for election, election day, day and then that, that yeah. Day, and, yeah. you know, hopefully we get some, some good news uh, pretty early in the evening. It's going to be really anticipated this time around. I, I definitely think there's mm. a lot of people um, keen to see a change and, and hopefully we see see that early on Saturday evening. What about you, Tim? Have you got – if we're going to do three big things, um, why don't we do, like, one each then <laughs> for um, – <laughs> for over over this coming week, what if we do one each, right, to get us through this coming week? Um, what do you reckon 
so we'll start with Dave. What's your big thing to get us through this coming week and um, and make sure that we can bring and it home? Social media. So, uh, you know, I've been super active on, on Twitter and just getting that message out there, really supporting, um, you know, other Greens candidates, get that message out there. There's still people that are making up their minds. Um, and one other thing, you don't, you, you have to be 18 to vote. You don't have to be 18 to volunteer. If you're uh, passionate about politics, you can get in touch mm. with your local branch and volunteer and they'll be super happy to have you helping out. Um, and um, you, do, you don't have to be 18 to, to spread the message on um, on TikTok or, or Twitter or whatever your chosen um, social media platform is. So that's my one. And Tim, what about you? How are you feeling about this week? Oh, the anticipation is huge. Um, but yeah, I think uh, now is the time. Um, now is the time to, yeah, volunteer, um, get, get out there and like be, be involved, so be what, involved. What's your biggest thing? Uh, what's your biggest thing that you would concentrate on this week? Do you think? Volunteer. <laughs> Just volunteer. Just do it. That's all volunteer. you got. Um, yeah. yeah, I think, I think, um, we've started to see more people volunteering because it's now top of mind and it's impossible to ignore. So I think that's just going to keep growing for the next, you know, seven, six, seven days. Um, but I'm, I think the really interesting thing that we have in Rankin is a, this is a seat of a very senior labor, you know, Jim Chalmers, um, uh, minister. So I think that, you know, he's even, a potential, you know, future prime minister down the line. And so this is a really kind of important see and i think um em everything that we can do to get people involved and part of the conversation i think now is the time to actually take take action um and see what we can see what we can achieve together awesome. how about you andrea um okay well i think it's time for us to unify as a community um and i i think you know we have so many little groups like um, climate action now and um, you know all of these little groups even the unions you know who a lot of us all want the one thing you know we we really want to kick Scott Morrison out we want to get rid of this love liberal government but um, but a lot of us want action on climate change a lot of us want to raise the minimum wage you know I think it's time for us to kind of band together a little bit and even like you're saying Dave you know social media i mean each of us can like each other's posts you know that's one thing that we can do you know just i think we need to kind of band together like the that that picture i keep thinking in my head is like all the little fishies have all been swimming around you know scattered around in the ocean i think it's time to kind of bring all the little fishies together and just be one and united have, and force, have conversations you know? you know have those cross ideological conversations you can you mm. can engage people in a calm and rational way um, and you know you can sometimes agree to disagree but have a conversation and challenge someone else's ideas without necessarily um you know having to be offensive but you, you, it's it's a reasonable place to do that and it's and now's a great time to do yeah that. yeah awesome okay well that's us thanks very much for joining us thanks. dave yeah thanks awesome thanks, to dave. talk to you tim yeah and we're gonna talk to you again uh post-election dave so that'll, that'll be exciting yeah, i think hopefully with uh, a better idea of what lies ahead for the next three years right yeah exactly yeah yeah i'm hoping that i'll be excited all the way through that episode <laughs> yes not crying <laughs> it's gonna be yes it'll be a one one extreme or the other <laughs> yes uh, i may be crying all the way through that episode because i'm happy tears of joy <laughs> yes <laughs> all right you've been listening to beyond the rona captioned audio is available on our youtube channel or you can visit beyondtherona.com to keep in touch or to view previous episodes which are all very very good catch you later